Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Tonight's stories deal with people's experiences with the spirit world that had a profound effect on their lives. Some changed their lives around completely, while others simply had their core beliefs strongly reinforced. Remember to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like tonight's stories, go ahead and give them a thumbs up and comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together, together, together. This is a strange but true story. Our family moved to a new house in Denver. My boys were in the first and third grades at the time. There used to be a boy who lived in our house before we moved in, and from what everyone says, he was an absolute terror, breaking into people's homes to steal, bullying the other children, and setting sheds on fire. So it was no surprise that the entire neighborhood was relieved when this family moved away and we moved in. That was all I knew about the situation before we got there. At that time, I was working in a Christian book and music store. They had an album bin with some very inexpensive records, so I would pick them up for a dollar a piece. Even though I had never heard of most of the bands, I was still willing to spend a buck. I would play these Christian records a lot, but I noticed that when I played them when my family was home, all hell would break loose. The kids would start fighting, my husband would yell, and our dog would get irritable and even attack at times. I had to start keeping the dog outside until my husband came home because he actually bit me and the boys. This was really weird because it was so out of character. We had always felt so safe around him. He was always our protector, but now he would attack. The boys started to fight a lot too. Now it's not unusual for families to have their children argue and fight from time to time, but I started to notice that it seemed to escalate every time I played these Christian records. I needed confirmation though. So one day, my best friend Carrie was over and I told her about my suspicions. I said, watch this and I went over and put on a record we were standing in the archway between the living room and the kitchen and sure enough once the music started all hell broke loose I went over and took the record off and everything returned to normal so now I had a witness weird huh unless the dog and the kids had suddenly become music critics Something was going on. But wait, it gets even more interesting. The living room was brightly lit. It had a very large window that ran the entire length of the wall, so the room had a lot of sunshine. It wasn't creepy at all. But I was compelled to look into the southwest corner of the room. There wasn't even a shadow or anything there. It was just like a magnet for me, though. My eyes were constantly drawn to the southwest corner of that room. Then other things started happening. During the day when I'd be home alone, a deep, dark depression would envelop me completely, and I would just cry and cry. There was no reason or context for it at all. It was just a feeling that would come over me. I truly just wanted to die. I'm not even kidding. I wasn't yet putting two and two together, though. But one day, I was so overtaken by this intense sadness that I actually collapsed to my knees. And with my face in my hands, I just sobbed and wailed. I just happened to be in the living room in the southwest corner. Then, I felt a comforting hand on my left shoulder, and I completely forgot why I was crying. It took away the pain instantly. And over 30 years later, try as I might, I still can't remember what I was so upset about. It really freaked me out, though, because there was no one in the room. So who put their hand on my shoulder? 
I'm not saying that it was Jesus or my guardian angel. I really can't say for sure what it was. But I am saying that I had a religious experience that can't be explained. I never talked about it with anyone because I thought people might think I was nuts. But having access to all those books at the Christian store, I became an avid reader. I soon read that there were other people who experienced that feeling of a calming hand on their shoulder. Although their experiences and situations were different than mine, they all still felt that same comfort that came with it. When I read that, I was truly relieved because it confirmed for me that I wasn't crazy. But I still never told anyone, not even my family or my best friend. It was just too weird to share. A few days after that experience, there was a group of neighborhood children at the end of the walkway standing on the sidewalk. I was in the house and the front door was open, and I was watching the kids through the screen door. I had one of my Christian records playing, and I was actually standing in the southwest corner, right where I had felt that same calming hand on my shoulder. As I stood there watching the children, all of a sudden, there were three bright blinding flashes of light in rapid succession that came from the corner. It was sort of like a flash from a camera, only much more intense. With each flash, I spun around in a circle saying, what, what, what? And immediately after, one of the children outside started screaming bloody murder and took off running down the street like a bolt of lightning. I, of course, promptly ran outside to find out the who, what, where, when, and why of what the heck just happened. Well, it turns out that one of the children, the one that ran away screaming, was the troublemaking boy that used to live in our house. His parents were visiting one of their friends in the area, and he came down to see who had moved into their old house. The children all said, for no reason, this boy started screaming and ran down the street. Now, this is just my take on it, but I think whatever negative force was in that southwest corner saw him and repossessed him in order to get out of the house now that it was full of praise and worship of Jesus. After this occurrence, the household returned to normal. My depression lifted, the children got along a lot better, and the dog became our protector again and stopped attacking. If I ever have another experience like this, I'll know beyond any doubt that if you fill your heart and home with the genuine praise and love for the Lord, any demon or evil force has to leave. You know, I've always wondered about that little boy, and I do hope that he eventually got the help he needed. He must now be in his mid-forties. I never knew his name, but God knows who he is. I've prayed for him often, and now that you know the story, maybe you'll pray for him too. Anyway, that's my take on it. What do you think? In June of 2020, I was going through a bit of a depression. Dark thoughts played out in my mind. My girlfriend and I had been fighting a lot, and work had become very stressful. I'd been drinking way too much, and it got to the point that I just didn't care about anything any longer. One day, I was drinking very heavily all day and late into the night. Once my girlfriend was in bed and asleep, I really upped the ante for the drinking, this time to hard liquor instead of the beer that I had been consuming. At some point deep in the night, I began to feel really sick and I lay face down on the couch, hoping that the headache and the pain throughout my body would just go away. But the pain just kept getting worse. Now, I'm not a religious person, but I remember asking God to help me, and suddenly everything changed. The next thing I knew, I was sitting on the kitchen floor near the doorway to the living room. I could see myself lying face down on the couch. I'm not sure if I had put two and two together yet, but I was out of my body. 
I just remember feeling absolutely disgusted by the sight of my lifeless body on that couch. While sitting on the kitchen floor, I tried to stand up by putting my hand on my right knee, and my hand went right through my leg. Suddenly, I was overcome with an intense fear and endless regret. I screwed up my life bad, and now I was dead. I had allowed my frustrations and depression to remove me from this life. In a panic, I put my hand back on my knee to try again, only to have my hand go right through my body again. This is when I absolutely knew that I had screwed up horribly. I thought of my girlfriend asleep in bed and how she was now going to have to find my body in the morning. No words can describe that feeling. I reached out for the nearest kitchen cabinet to pull myself up into the standing position, and my hand went through that as well. Then my dog walked into the kitchen and sat down right in front of me and stared at me. My heart broke. My dog loved me so much, and now I was leaving her behind too. I reached out for her, thinking that I would never be able to hold her again. But I could feel her. My hand touched the top of her head, and I felt her. I grabbed her, and I pulled her close to me. And that is when I decided to fight for my life. There was no way in hell I was going to leave this life if I could help it. I don't remember how I got up, but I went over to the couch, and I lay back down inside of my body. It was truly a sickening experience. I can't really describe it, but you can't just get back inside of your body once you're a spirit and everything will be all right. It just doesn't work like that. I vaguely remember becoming more and more frantic as I kept trying to get my spirit to latch on to my body. I think that every limb, organ, pore, everything has to match up perfectly. I'm not sure though, but that's how it seemed to be for me. I remember trying harder and harder, raising myself up to look down at my body right beneath me to see exactly how my legs and arms were positioned, and trying again and again and again to match them up. Suddenly, I sat up on the couch, gasping for air. I had never tasted anything so pure and beautiful as that air. I sat there for maybe five minutes in shock just breathing in lungfuls of air. I finally got up and went into the kitchen to make myself a glass of ice water. The taste of the water was just as beautiful as the oxygen that I was breathing. Then I remembered my girlfriend asleep in bed, and I went in there and lay next to her, terrified to close my eyes in case I never woke up again. My energy must have been so strong, because after just a minute of lying still next to her, she woke up and asked me what was wrong. I told her that I had screwed up really bad and that I thought I might have died for a few minutes. We talked about it, but I don't remember the rest of the night. I used to joke about being a ghost, about how I would just hang out in showers with unsuspecting women, or photobomb pictures, or go where I wanted to and do what I wanted to. But that's not how it works. I wish I could describe this, but it almost feels like I wear death now, as sometimes I can almost taste it or smell it around me. I'm very scared of dying, and I no longer care to hear ghost stories because they feel all too real to me. For weeks, my head was really messed up over this. One, because I can still remember that while sitting on the kitchen floor looking at my body, there was this sort of wall an invisible separation between the living world and the dead, almost like a layer of crystal clear plastic or water. I couldn't see it, but I knew it was there. Now I'm worried that this invisible wall that separates us from the spirit world is there and all too easy to accidentally cross through. The second reason is my dog. She's about six months old, very intelligent, and she absolutely loves me. After that night, I took all of the alcohol in the house and I put it in the spare room used for storage to get it away from me. 
any time that I have to go into that room, my happy-go-lucky dog will now drop everything that she's doing and run to the doorway and stare at me. Not a cute little, what are you doing stare. This is something different. She freezes in place, slightly hunched down, like she's getting ready to attack. She doesn't respond to any commands. She doesn't growl nor blink. She literally just freezes there like a statue, almost like an ominous threat for me to never drink again. And once I leave the room, she goes in, looks around, then comes out and goes right back to being her usual playful self. I've tried researching near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, astral projection, lucid dreaming, the lot. But I can't find a link between the spirit world and being able to touch an animal on that level. Nor can I figure out my dog's behavior around alcohol now or her reaction to me in that room every time I go in there. Except to think that she knows and I know what happened and how. Here's a picture of my dog. I'm the love of her life and in a very real way, I think she's mine as well as she is the one who really helped me to love the life that I have. I'm only telling my story this one last time for the world to hear in hopes that you actually listen. If you're depressed and dark thoughts come your way, don't succumb to them. There will always be better days ahead. You just have to believe that. Change your diet, enjoy nature more, get away from toxic people and situations. Your life is yours, and you only get this one chance. It's scary as hell on the other side if you leave this life and you're not right with yourself. I'm in a much better place in my head right now. I find it very difficult to be depressed anymore because I can't forget that night, and it scares me. I no longer care about petty things anymore, like ego or pride or getting so angry for pointless reasons. I'm confused about heaven and hell now, as I saw neither. Christians say that the absence of the body is to be in the presence of God, that any other spirit is demonic. But that's not true. There's so much that we can't explain. It's funny how, after all these years of being away from religion, I'm so interested in the Bible now. This whole experience has brought me back to it. My only interest in ghost stories now is to try to find the truth in them. I saw on a now-removed YouTube video that, with advances in DNA, a scholar and a scientist decided to take an ancient Sumerian text and compare it alongside our current charts of the elements. While doing so, a message appeared that read, God within is you. I absolutely love life now, and I want to learn the truth. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this, and I hope that someone who's depressed and hears this, it makes them think twice about their choices, and that they choose to reach out for life. I should add that what happened that night was not a suicide attempt, but I had been tossing the idea around for a while, but not anymore. Lesson learned. Life is too beautiful. This happened back in 2012. The room I stayed in at my parents' house used to be my grandfather's room. It's sort of like an apartment, it has its own kitchen and bathroom, etc. Grandpa passed in 2005, and I moved in in 2009. Ever since I moved back there, every once in a while, I'll feel a presence in the room, like someone sitting on the edge of my bed or holding my hand, or I can feel like someone has their hand on my shoulder. This is never threatening, and it never feels dangerous, because I believe it's my grandfather. At that time in 2012, I was doing my junior practicum student teaching. This is sort of like where you go once a week to school to observe the other teachers 
before the actual student teaching starts. It was a Tuesday night and I only remember that because I used to have my practicum on Wednesdays and it was a considerable distance from my house so I had to try to get to bed early. But that night I had trouble getting to sleep which never happened before. I can usually pass out anywhere at any time. I began to have a feeling of anxiety come over me and then a state of panic, another thing that never happened to me before. In my mind's eye, I kept envisioning a tall, black, humanoid figure with a long red tongue standing in the corner of my room. At the time, it felt very real and very vivid, but now I can't really recall any details about this figure, except for the tongue. I began to feel that if I stayed in my room any longer, I would be in very serious danger. So I went up to the family room and I decided to watch TV. I looked at the digital clock on the wall and I noticed it was 2.59 a.m. The second that the clock hit 3 a.m., the room was filled with the sound of crickets for a full minute. It was coming right from inside the room. But once the clock hit 3.01, everything stopped. Now, I'm not a religious person, but my supervising teacher at that school was. He told me that crickets are related to locusts, and he referred to the biblical plagues. He told me to recite a prayer to St. Michael. But when he tried to tell it to me, he couldn't remember it. Now, he said that prayer every day of his life, yet when he tried to help me, he couldn't seem to remember any of the words. Very odd. When I went home that day, and in the days that followed, it seemed as if there was a fog around my room, and the room felt different, just off. I would come home and lie on the bed for an afternoon nap, and the bed would start to shake. Then my mother began asking me if I felt anything weird in the house. She has her own experiences, but those are stories for another day. I live in New Jersey, and in October of that year, we were hit by Hurricane Sandy and were without power for about a week, and I was not about to sleep in that room in the darkness. So I moved my mattress upstairs to the living room. Every night for that week, a bluish-gray fog would come up from downstairs and circle the room. I began to have dreams, too. Dreams of religious icons and the Virgin Mary falling into pits of fire. I realized soon after that I had forgotten my grandfather's birthday. I usually light a candle in church for him, and I thought maybe he was angry for me forgetting. So I went to church and I lit a candle, but it didn't change anything. Soon after, however, I had a dream that I was driving with my grandpa down a road. It was a paved road, pitch black but bright white on either side, like in a desert. My grandpa had a really thick Irish brogue, and it was sometimes hard to understand him, but he said something along the lines of how he would always be there for me. The next morning, I told my mom about the dream while my brother was in the room, and he interrupted me and began filling in details of my dream for me. I asked him how he knew about this and he said, I was there. I was in the back seat of that car in the dream. I had that dream too. The following night, I had another dream. I was in a dead cornfield with naked androgynous beings dancing around with each other. And behind these beings, up from the ground, came a giant black monster. It kind of looked like a dragon. I could see it clear as day as it looked down on me. And from behind it came a winged humanoid being. I guess you could call it an angel, and it had a sword. It stabbed the dragon creature, and then it knelt down in front of me. I woke up, and at the foot of my bed was a white, translucent figure. It hovered there for about 10 seconds before disappearing. As I looked at it, I felt a peace that I had never felt before, 
and I don't think I'll ever feel again. The strange dreams and everything stopped after that. I never told my brother about the black figure, the dragon, or the androgynous creatures. But fast forward a year later, and I came home from work and my brother was sitting at the kitchen table, looking very shaken. He told me that he had had a dream of naked creatures dancing around in a dead cornfield with a black dragon behind them. There was no angel there for him, though. He told me that after he woke up, he looked out the window and there was a large black figure with a long red tongue standing there. This was the last I ever heard of it. I'm still not particularly religious, but I can tell you, ever since these events, I sleep with the lights on. This happened back in 2016, and it's the first time I've ever spoken about it publicly. I can't confirm what it was definitively, but I always try to squash paranormal experiences with science and logic. But I can't explain this one. Based on circumstances, I think it was a jinn, the Islamic term for a demon, or something else supernatural. I've seen a lot of jinn-related posts lately, primarily from folks in the military. I've been fascinated with these creatures ever since my encounter with one. For context, I'm an American, neither Muslim nor religious, and I first became exposed to the concept of jinn after living abroad in Muslim societies. The most profound exposure was when I first went to Kashmir. I was invited by a friend and was staying at her home. If you don't know the history of Kashmir, you should know that it's the most militarized zone in the whole world, and it's had a lot of bloodshed over the years. As beautiful as it is, it's also very eerie as a result. I don't know how to describe it other than it being very creepy at night with a lot of weird sounds. Outside of the city and being in the Himalayas, there are lots of woodlands where the jinn are supposed to prefer to live. Anyway, while staying with my friend, I noticed things would happen to me at night. Like my legs and arms would randomly get pulled. I thought maybe I was just jolting myself awake, but it happened multiple times a night. And it's totally out of character for me. Then one night, I felt like I was being choked in my sleep and I awoke shocked and confused. The next morning, I finally opened up to my friend and her sister about what I had been experiencing. They told me that because I would only sleep in underwear and a t-shirt at night, I was possibly attracting a djinn or their house angel. The house angel could possibly have been the one jolting me awake to warn me that I might be attracting a djinn since I was going against cultural norms sleeping in my underwear. I was skeptical, but I decided to test the theory and wore pajama pants to bed that night, and the weird jolting stopped. A few days later, we decided to visit a rural scenic area of Kashmir. My friend's cousin and my now husband, yes, we met and fell in love there, took us there. When we entered the area, I started to feel extremely ill. It's hard to describe, but I felt very lightheaded and I couldn't breathe, and I had an overwhelming sense of dread and anxiety. I honestly felt like crying, and I wanted to turn around and go home, but we chalked it up to the higher altitude. Although I had been in areas with even higher altitude the previous day and felt fine, after sitting down for a time, I finally felt better and we decided to go exploring in the mountains. So I was frolicking in the hills with my future husband and we were kissing. First cultural no-no. Then, a bit later, I had to pee, so I found a bush and did my thing. For those Muslims hearing this, I know. But bear in mind, I was a foolish American girl 
and my future husband didn't think to warn me about this cultural faux pas. Because let me tell you, you should never pee outdoors in a Muslim society, especially in gin areas, because you might very possibly be peeing on them or their home, and then they get pissed. Yeah, so things went downhill from there. A few days later, I returned to the UK, where I had been studying at the time, and I remember feeling absolutely horrible. I was vomiting and felt very hazy. I assumed I might just have jet lag, so I went to sleep. I slept soundly for 11 hours straight, not waking up once. When I finally woke up the next day, I hopped into the shower and my body started to burn. Like, really burn? I was so confused. Why was my body burning? So I looked in the mirror and there were deep, curved scratches all over my chest, breasts, and even my stomach. They hurt so bad, and they were even a little bit bloody. I later found out, when my friend looked and then took pictures for me, that they were also all over my back and right above my butt. Here are the photos. They were in awkward places where I honestly don't think I could have done it to myself. I also don't even have long enough nails to make such deep, intense scratches. And I don't know how I could have done that level of damage to myself and not wake up. I showed them to all my friends and they were deeply disturbed and they also don't believe that I could have done it to myself either. I immediately told my Kashmiri boyfriend, now husband, and he told me, to recite some verses from the Quran to protect myself from jinn. It was believed that I picked up a jinn that day in the country and that it attached itself to me or one of the items that I brought from there. Reading from the Quran seemed to stop further activity and the scratches never happened again. Of course, sometimes I scratch myself, but they're always very minimal. I've tried to recreate the curved scratches and I just can't. So I'm pretty positive this was a gin attack. I have several other gin stories from my Kashmiri in-laws, and I'd be happy to share them if there's any interest. Also, if you have any insight about the scratches, let me know. Again, I can't confirm that it was definitely a gin, but it's just my personal opinion. I'm an 18-year-old Catholic, and I wanted to learn about demons because I find them interesting, but I don't really know anything about them. I wasn't a practicing Catholic until about four years ago. Prior to that, I had weird stuff happen to me. But now that I'm with the Lord, nothing unusual is happening, and I'd like to keep it that way. But here are a few things that happened to me before I found my way. During my childhood, I always felt like something was watching me, especially when I was in the dining room. Whatever was in there felt evil and intimidating. There was always a feeling of eyes upon me, and when I left the room, I could sense a presence behind me, following. One day when it followed me, I just knew things were gonna get scary. I remember entering my room turning on the light and seeing what looked like a man standing in the corner. It just stood there for like a minute or so, then faded away. When the man was there, I felt such an evil force that I started to cry. I believe it was a shadow person because it was all black. Then, when I was around 10, I began to feel a presence in my room as I tried to sleep. There would be a feeling of tension in the room, and my heart would start to beat faster. The door was closed, and there was no way anyone could have entered the room without the door making noise. Yet I knew I wasn't alone. Footsteps would approach the bed, and whatever it was, 
would check to see if I was awake. It would get up super close, trying to see under the blanket, and I could hear it breathing heavily as it peered at me. I would keep my eyes closed tight and try to breathe slowly and silently to make it think that I was asleep. When it was satisfied thinking that I was asleep, the thing would start to leave, but it would turn around to look at me as it walked out. Once it was gone, the tension would go away and I could sleep as normal. This happened every single night for a long time. I remember one night, I woke up and I saw something with black eyes looking at me. I pretended that I didn't see it and I turned over in bed. It left and it didn't come back to my room after that. I never told my family about the entity in my bedroom, but I did tell my mom about the thing in the dining room. Another time, when I was very young and not yet a practicing Christian, I looked up some rituals on YouTube and I found a game where you light a match in the dark and you recite some words that are supposed to determine your fate. I wanted to try it, so I went into the closet. While reciting the words in my head, I could sense a presence in the closet and I could feel something pulling at me in the darkness. I immediately got out of there and I never attempted that again. When I was around 13, my dad, brother, and I were leaving a restaurant late one night. We were parked really far away, and for some reason the street lights weren't on. So I just blindly followed my dad and brother as we walked back to the car through the empty streets. Approximately halfway through our journey, I felt something was watching me. I turned around, but nothing was there. Then. I felt something touch my back. I again turned around, but nothing was there. A few seconds later, something hit my right leg. I kept walking, trying to keep up with my dad and my brother. Then, something pushed me from behind. I finally got out my cell phone, and I snapped a quick photo into the darkness, and I managed to capture a photo of whatever that thing was running away. Here's the photo. It looks like a humanoid, silvery but sort of transparent too. One night, I went downstairs to get a snack in the kitchen. As I ate, I felt a very strong, evil presence. Then, as I went back upstairs, I felt that something was following me, so I looked behind me. Horrible mistake. I saw something with a white head, black eyes, long limbs, slender black body, with a huge smile and bangs running towards me. I ran upstairs to the bathroom and locked myself in. I heard loud footsteps stop right outside the door and then groaning and heavy breathing like a beast. After a while, the thing went away. I went to wake up my mom and I told her. Afterwards, she gave me a necklace that I now always wear. It's made of 18 karat gold and has a medal of the Virgin Mary inscribed with my name and a cross. Ever since I've been wearing this, I haven't had any other encounters. If I were to give you any advice, it's to always have positive thoughts because those attract good vibes. Have you ever had any paranormal experiences that changed your life? If so, and you'd like to share them, feel free to send them to me for possible inclusion in a future video. You can submit them to me at daughterofdarkness underscore stories at protonmail.com or at my subreddit, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash daughter of darkness. I'd like to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone listening tonight for your support. Whether you show up every week or just drop by now and then to join the party, I really do value every one of you. 
I'd also like to give a very special thank you to Mortis Media, whom I credit with giving me a jump start in the horror narration community. You won't find many creators generous enough to give a shout out and do collaborations with a total beginner like he did for me. I had a whopping 18 subscribers when he first noticed me and sent people my way. So thank you, Mortis, and thanks to all of you. So now, until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>